In this video, I want to derive e of x for the binomial distribution, but strictly through just looking at summations. So I've put this as an extension uh, because you wouldn't be expected to replicate this in the exam. Um, but I think it would be nice to see that we can do this um, as we've derived uh, the e of x and var of x for the other distributions as well. So x is a binomial distribution with n and p as its parameters. The probability of x being equal to r is ncr times the probability of p, the probability p to the power of r, sorry, times 1 minus p to the power of n minus r. Okay, so e of x we know is the sum from r is equal to 0 up to n of r times the probability of x being equal to r, which we know is the sum from r is 0 up to n of r times this. So n c r p to the power of r, 1 minus p to the power of n minus r. Now, the first thing to note is that when r is 0, so the first term of this summation, because I've got r out the front, r being 0 is just going to be 0 times all of that. So the first term of this series will be 0. So I know that that's actually just going to be the sum, and I could just change that from r is 1 to n rather than r is 0 to n. Okay, because the first term is going to be 0 anyway. Right. So it'd be more useful for us if we now rewrite the NCR using the formula. So the factorial formula. So we're going to write that as the sum from r is 1 to n of r times by uh, n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial p to the r 1 minus p to the n minus r. Okay, now first thing I note is that I've got the r there and I've got the r factorial there. Now r factorial is the same thing as r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 times r minus 3 all the way down to 1. So r factorial is the same as writing r times r minus 1 factorial. So actually when I've got r divided by r factorial I can cancel through the r's. So this I could write as the sum from r is 1 to n of the r cancels with the r there and I'll have n factorial over r minus 1 factorial n minus r factorial p to the r 1 minus p to the n minus r. Now it probably doesn't look um, any simpler to us um, but let's think about what we need to get to. We know what the answer is going to be. We know that it's going to be n times p. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out n and p because I know that's the answer. Now you might feel that's a bit of cheating. It is. <laughs> but essentially if I do that the next stage will become more obvious. So I'm going to factor out n and p. So let's just see it happen first. So first of all, I want to get n out of this numerator. Now I know that n factorial, in the same way that r factorial is r times r minus 1 factorial, n factorial will be n times n minus 1 factorial. I've got the r minus 1 factorial and the n minus r factorial in the denominator. And I'm also going to factor out the p. So I'm going to write that as p 
times by p to the r minus 1. Because that's p to the 1 times p to the r minus 1, which makes the p to the r. And I've still got the 1 minus p to the n minus r there. Now, because the n and the p have got nothing to do with r, they can be brought out the front of the summation. So n times p times the sum from r is 1 to n. And what I've got left is n minus 1 factorial over r minus 1 factorial, n minus r factorial, times p to the r minus 1 times 1 minus p to the n minus r. Now, let's have a little think. Out the front, I've got n times p. I know n times p is the answer that I need to get to. So what I need to do is now show that this is equal to 1. Because if I've got n times p times 1, then I've proved my point. Okay, I've shown what I need to do. So. In order to make this a bit more obvious to us, what I'll do is I'll put in a couple of substitutions. So what I'll do is I'll now let A be R minus 1, and I'm going to let B be uh, N minus 1. Now, I've also got this n minus r in there as well, so I best work out what that is. Now, if a is r minus 1, then r would be a plus 1. And if b is n minus 1, then n is b plus 1. So n minus r is that, take away that. The 1s cancel, and I'll be left with b minus a. <clears throat> OK. So I've got n times p. Now I'm going to leave those as they are. I know I could write them in terms, uh, I could write the n in terms of b plus 1, but I don't want to. I'm just going to leave n times p out the front. OK, so don't worry about that. Now the summation goes from r is 1 to n. Now when r is 1, um, a is going to be 0. OK, so a is 0. And this is when r is equal to n. OK? So r is 1 to r is equal to n. Now, when r is equal to n, a is going to be equal to n minus 1. But n minus 1 is just b. So actually, we're going from a is 0 up to a is b. Now, the n minus 1 factorial is now b factorial. The r minus 1 factorial is now a factorial, and n minus r is b take away a factorial. I've got p to the power of r minus 1, which is p to the a, and then 1 minus p to the power of b minus a. Now, what do we have here? Well, I've got from a is 0 to b, this is b choose a times p to the a times 1 minus p to the b minus a. This is that. OK? So if you just think of it, it's going from a is 0 up to b. So it'd be like saying this is going from n is, um, so, sorry, from r is 0 up to n the summation of this. But that is summing all of the probabilities in the binomial distribution. And we know that all the probabilities have got to add up to 1. So this is equal to 1. And so you get left with, this has got to be n times p times 1, which is unp. Now, of course, you could have explained that from this stage without using a substitution. But I think the substitution makes it more obvious as to why that works. OK? And so that is how you can derive that the binomial distribution expected value of x is equal to n times p using summations.